Good afternoon. Today, I am officially announcing that I am ending my bid for the Republican nomination for mayor of New York City. This afternoon, I had a very brief phone call with City Council candidate Vicki Palladino, running in the district for College Point and Whitestone here in Queens. I will have to say, for a brief time, the phone call went very well. Vicki and I understand the challenges that our city faces in the next couple of months, and especially heading into the June 22nd primary and looking into the deep run. I feel in the best interest it is not correct of me to divide the Republican vote. Right now, this is a very crucial election we are facing. The city of New York is just one bad mayor away from losing everything that we have. I certainly cannot imagine losing this house in Fresh Meadows. I've been here now for the past 16 years, and even during COVID, I have greatly appreciated everything that I love about this city. Right now, New York City is crying. It is crying right now. We need to unify together. And I'm reaching out to my fellow Republicans in the five boroughs. This is a moment of clarity and time. And, more importantly, Vicki and I are on the same picture. Which is why today I am officially announcing that I am endorsing Curtis Lewa for the Republican nomination for mayor of New York City on June 22nd. This has been a decision I have been contemplating since I have launched my exploratory bid. I have been learning more about Curtis in the past two weeks, and I have figured out in the past two weeks that in the best interest of the June 22nd primary, Given the fact that we are using ranked choice voting for the first time, this is an election where we really have to act serious and tough. Once again, this election in November is going to decide the fate of the fine boroughs of New York City. This is where we have to unify as Republicans. Unify and come together at a time of unity. Given the fact that right now we have a lot of the issues that we need to discuss, we have to fund our police. We have to make sure that transportation is funded. I saw Curtis Lewa on Woodhaven Boulevard on YouTube. I know that stretch of road very well. It's very disgraceful seeing the bridge on Woodhaven Boulevard not correctly paved. Not just for private car drivers, but for the bus operators who run the Q52, Q53 bus route. That takes a lot of money into repairing the suspension of a vehicle. There are so many potholes in New York City, not just the one on Woodhaven Boulevard, but many others that need to be fixed as well. Now, in the next couple of months, I hope to get Curtis to come out to Fresh Meadows. In April, I will take a trip over to the 188th Street and 73rd Avenue traffic light to see if the Department of Transportation has fixed the 25 seconds. As many of you heard in the past week, we had a road rage incident here in Fresh Meadows. And one of the culprits could have been the out-of-sync traffic light that was backing up traffic along 73rd Avenue. It might have been a rare occurrence where it was going to happen, but so far we have not seen the pre-pandemic traffic we used to see along 73rd Avenue. I fear in the next couple of months, when more things do open up, and when more people are going to travel when the weather gets warmer, it is going to be an issue. And there could be other out-of-sync traffic lights that could be fixed. Hopefully there will be an investigation into that in the next couple of months. 
If you have any cause of concern, please let me know in the description, in the comments below. And hopefully I will forward it over to Curtis Lee's team and we will hopefully figure something out in the future. Me here on Andy's Randomness and hopefully Curtis's team because that's just one issue that could be addressed. It's a minor one, but again, we could be back to pre-pandemic traffic in a few months and we have to prepare for it. I know the highways have already gotten close to it. I was almost uh, in traffic on the Grand Central uh, last week when I was getting my COVID vaccine, but uh, still, um, now that I'm going to be fully vaccinated with the next couple of weeks, and I am going to be going back for my second dose in April, I am going to hopefully be proactive, very hard campaigning for hopefully our next mayor of New York City, Curtis Lewa. Before I wrap this video up, I want to discuss a website that you should take a look at for yourself. And this is very important to take a look at this uh, website. Very important. Because the reason why I am saying this website is important is because you can look at the issues for yourself. You can see what Curtis is about. Now, the website I'm going to be giving you all is www.curtis Sliwa for mayor.com. Now, I will quickly read why we should turn out and vote for Curtis on June 22nd. Now, I will mention that two GOPs have already endorsed him Staten Island and Brooklyn. Right now, Fernando Mateo has been endorsed by Manhattan GOP, the Bronx GOP, and the Queens GOP. Now, I can understand why they have done so. Pretty much, Fernando Mateo has become the establishment candidate. We know that Fernando is not really there for us. Maybe he could be TLC commissioner, but running the whole city would be bad. So, we know one thing's for sure, and it's a quote that Curtis has said. Mayor de Blasio has certainly destroyed this city for the past eight years. And I have mentioned this previously, that we are dangerously close to seeing the same homicide rate in New York City that we saw back in the awful violent year of 1981. Now, Curtis himself witnessed the awful violent year of 1981 for himself, even before I was born. Right now, a lot of the issues that I care about is, again, funding our police. Right now, Mayor de Blasio is threatening to cut more funding in this year's city budget alone. And I'm deeply concerned that the anti-Asian hate force is not going to properly get funded. Recently, you've been seeing in the news that attacks against Asian Americans have gone up. And as you know, two incidents here in Queens have deeply disturbed me. One incident at 
Casino Corridor Park where a mother was minding her own business with her baby and she was attacked because of her race. And then just recently on the campus of PS20 in Flushing, Queens, a school where my mom used to work for 20 years, from 1991 to 2011. Recently, a 13-year-old boy was playing on the basketball park at Bonet Playground, right on the corner of Barclay Avenue. Sadly, the 13-year-old boy was minding his own business playing basketball and Bottom line, you know, not just the anti-Asian hate force needs to be funded, but the NYPD needs to be funded as well, as a whole. It was a huge mistake, bowing down to political pressure last year to defund the police. Look at Portland, Oregon, for an example. Explain why, for almost a whole year, the city has been taken over by anarchists. We are one bad mayor away from having our city become like Portland. We're very close to that right now. We're dangerously close. And I'm very fearful that the likely Democratic nominee could be Andrew Yank, could be Eric Adams. I am deeply afraid. And yes, Eric Adams used to be a cop. But even if Eric Adams used to be a cop, they're still going to threaten to defund the police when they have to negotiate their first city budget. Any mayor, any previous mayor can tell you this. Well, right now we only have two former living mayors, Rudy Giuliani and Mike Bloomberg. They can tell you the hardest part of being mayor of New York City, the first three months, you have to negotiate the city budget. I mean, there's people who have to advise mayoral candidates. Uh, you know, when you take office in January, you have to get ready to negotiate the New York City budget for the fiscal year. So when Curtis gets in, it's going to be when, because I need Queens to show up. Remember, the reason why Giuliani won in 1993 was because we flipped Queens. Queens was a strong Democratic hold... For years, all right? That's why Dinkins won in 89, and that's why Koch won all the previous mayoralships. Queens, for a long time, from 1993 to 2009, was a strong Republican hold. That's why Rudy Giuliani and Mike Bloomberg were our mayors. Look where Curtis was. I just mentioned Woodhaven Boulevard. Woodhaven Boulevard. And look, I don't care if Curtis doesn't unblock me on Twitter. The last thing we need to do is to divide the Republican vote right now. We can't do that. We have to come together. And I know Curtis was criticized for operating a McDonald's. But hey, that's some experience in an executive role, right? Being a night shift manager at a very young age. Keep that in mind. Curtis was a very young age. Being a night shift manager in a McDonald's? I understand other people have criticized him for that, but that's better leadership than, you know, a former cop who, again, I can respect Bill Pepitone for being a former cop. God bless him. In fact, he was one of the first responders on 9-11. And a former taxi guy, but really... Really, we need to come together right now. I need you all to understand, my fellow Republicans in the five boroughs, we have to come together right now. We have to do the right thing for our party. We have to. We have to unite as Republicans. We have to show strength. We have to show unity. We cannot divide our vote. We have ranked choice voting once again. We've never had ranked choice voting in a primary before. And thankfully, again, I know this from experience. I know this for a fact that even though I'm a Republican, and I will admit that I support 
James Gennaro, and by the way, I am supporting him for his re-election bid. Keep this in mind, we're going to have a moderate in the city council. A lot of them have gone way to the left. Way to the left right now. Corey Johnson, for an example. Uh, also, I want to mention that right now, uh, I want to bring up the fact that we need Republicans to run in Karen Councilwitz's district. Uh, I'm going to be reaching out to a couple city council candidates. In fact, I'm going to be campaigning really hard in Kew Gardens in the fall. I want to see that seat flip, right? Versus my city council district, the last thing we need is to lose James Gennaro's strong leadership because James has always been there for us. And I look at bipartisan lines sometimes. But in terms of everything else, I just don't see any other Republican candidate, let alone any other mayoral candidate right now, who's going to care about our quality of life. Do you know how hard it is being a bus rider and you notice how rough the roads are? It can be very bad. Very bad. So, I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll vote on June 22nd or early voting because I actually have the early voting date. The uh, early voting date is on June 12th. And it ends on June 20th. So you have from June 12th till June 20th to participate in early voting. Then we have the main primary on June 22nd. So again, we really need you all to turn out. We got to make sure Curtis gets 50%. Because if we don't get the 50%, we go to a runoff in July. And that's a problem right there. I don't want to see a runoff in July. I really don't. I may not even be in New York when the runoff happens. Right? So, might be on vacation, by the way. But the point is, that's why I'm making this video. I am ceasing my exploratory bid for the Republican nomination of mayor of New York City. I intend not to run for any office. However, I will bring up the fact that if Curtis does win the nomination... I will present a strong case and I will present a good possibility. Remember this, the mayor gets to pick two MTA board members. I would love to serve on the MTA board, but I need your help to make sure that I have a good chance in 2022 that I can get on the MTA board. So, Make sure you vote for Curtis. Need your help. Get out and vote in June. Thank you all very much.